Hello, hello again friends and loyal Wolfpack members, Chaos Wolf here and welcome back to the Elite Dangerous 2.1 beta server. Now, yet again, I have been challenged to try and make a ship that has been considered somewhat subpar into something that is, well, not subpar. So, yes, you can see quite clearly that we're sitting here with a Cobra Mark IV, which to my mind, is the biggest steaming turd in the entire Elite Dangerous ship lineup. So, what we're going to go and do is, uh, or what I've done, mostly, is to try and make this somewhat of an interesting ship to fly. So, I've already gone and upgraded most of this because we've seen all these particular upgrades and previous ship builds that we've done. So, what have I gone and done thus far? Let's go and have a quick look. We'll have a look over at the modules. You can see that I've modded the thrusters, the shields, the shield cell banks. I haven't modded the power distributor yet. The frame shift drive's been modified, both the pulse lasers uh, and the power plant has been modified. But what you might notice is we have three torpedo launchers here. Yes, we have three class one torpedo launchers because I wanted to mix a couple of videos together. I wanted to try out some torpedoes. So that's what we're gonna go and do. But first of all, let's go into, where are we? Outfitting, that's the one I wanted. So let's go into the core internals and let's go and see what we've got here. So let's have a look at the modifications. I've managed to get 28% more power out of the power plant. We've got just shy of 20 megawatts. So that's not bad at all. Uh, the thrusters, if we can have a look here. I went for a dirty drive tuning. We've got almost 30% more drive capacity, so that's awesome. Uh, I went and modified the lightweight bulkheads with lightweight armor to give us a hull boost and thermal resistance. Well, the thermal resistance was like a secondary effect, but I was after the hull boost, which I think makes it lighter and makes it so that we can be a bit more maneuverable. I'm not 100% certain what the whole boost actually does. So if someone can tell me in the comments definitively what that actually means, that'd be awesome. Frame shift drive, we've modded this for a longer jump range. We've got nearly 25% more jump range. Uh, basically, we have better fuel efficiency as well, so that's not bad. Uh, I didn't bother trying to max this one out because uh, there's no need on this particular build. Uh, and that's all of the core internals that I have modified thus far. Optional internals, we have a prismatic shield. So let's go and have a look at the modifications here. And do 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 optimal hull mass, the wrong one. Where is it? Optimal strength, here we go. 26.7% stronger. And we've got a lot more resistances here. So hopefully we're gonna be able to take a few more hits. Uh, back again. I've modified this one again. Again for better spin-up time and more shield reinforcement. So I was re-rolling this one more for the shield reinforcement over the spin-up time because that I'm not too fussed about. I just want to make sure that we can buff up the shields as much as we can when needed. Uh, and that's it for the optional internals. Going on to the hard points, you can see that we have two pulse lasers and I've pretty much just modified both of these up for weapon efficiency. So they're both maxed out because the maximum grade you can get for these is grade four. But we've gone for scramble spectrum this time because I want to go and see how this works from our end. Because we've been on the receiving end of this, but I want to see what it's like being the one actually using these trolley little bastards. So it's an experimental upgrade that allows hull strikes to potentially trigger random malfunctions on the target. So I'm really curious to go and see how that ends up working in our favor. But what we need to go and do now is go and modify the torpedo pylons. So let's go and do that. But we also need to go and modify the power distributor. So first of all, let's go and do that quick. Because what I'm planning to go and do is just modify the power distributor for weapons. So here we go. Because the Cobra Mark IV has an absolutely pathetically small distributor it has five weapons and it has a class three distributor so this is not this is not acceptable so we're going to modify this up and we're going to try and get it to max out here 
So come on, come on, come on. Ooh, that's actually really good. Yeah, obviously all these go completely utterly to dog shite, but I don't really care. Engine recharge goes up a little bit. Oh, that's not bad. Weapons recharge goes up even further. Ooh, that's nice. Engine's capacity goes up even further. That's not too bad. Systems, yeah, I don't care. Is that it? Yep, yeah, okay. No, I'm happy to apply for that one. Apply for that one. Set that one on, even. That one. So, let's go for the torpedoes. We've got three torpedo launchers. Now, bear in mind, these are all only single shot. And I don't want to fire these off one at a time, uh, individually, or all together even, is what I meant. So I have staggered them into three different fire groups. So fire the first one, switch fire group to the next one, fire that one, switch fire group to the next one. Okay, done. So, I've, i tell you what though, I was somewhat disappointed to find how few modifications there actually are for torpedo launchers. You've got lightweight mounts and sturdy mounts. Now, between the two of these, I don't think that the lightweight mount is really that useful. Out of the two, I would much, much prefer to go for the sturdy mount. Not only does it increase the integrity, it also increases the mass, but yeah, we can live with that. They're only class one. But this is the bit that I was really interested in. The armor piercing. So this is going to make these torpedoes much, much more lethal against larger ships. So what are we going to do? What we are going to go and do, I should say, need to start calming down when I'm talking, is go and check out these and see what kind of modifications we can get. So obviously the mass is going to be going up much higher. Holy crud, the integrity went to... The integrity didn't go up that much, but this is more what we want anyway. Power draws better, damage is better, damage per second. Ooh. Oh, there's two right next to each other there. What the hell does that mean? Are those the same thing? No, they're not the same thing. Okay, mass lock munition. Experimental warheads incorporate frame shift technology. Successful detonation significantly inhibits charging of supercruise. Charging for supercruise. Oh, right, okay. That's cool, but we're not going to be using this for what we're doing, so I'm going to roll again. I want to try and find something really kind of cool and interesting. So let's click on this one. Reverberating Cascade. Experimental Musician. Ugh, yeah. Try again. Experimental munitions that overload shield on impact, directly damaging the shield generator. Oh, okay. But not only that, but we've got maxed out on integrity and armor piercing. So yeah, why the hell not? So we'll keep going for the torpedoes. Maybe we'll go for the same ones. I don't know. It would be nice to have everything the same. So let's try that again. Wait a sec. Discard. I went for the wrong one, didn't I? Torpedoes. That one. Yes. Sturdy mount we wanted. So, let's go for that one. So I did I did think that the uh, the sliders looked a bit di a bit wrong. So, let's see what we get. Reverberating cascade. Yeah, sure. I'll go for that one. And let's mod the last one up as well. Let's see if we get the same. Yeah, reverberating cascade. Yeah, that's apply. I'm fine with that. That was quite easy, actually, getting all of them being the same type. And that's the first time that's happened to me, rolling them one after the other. Normally, I've had to re-roll many, many times in order to do this. So, yeah. Um, okay, so let's go and go into the commodities market. I'm going to go and sell all these fish, just because I want to see what our jump range currently is. So, let's have a look over 22.51 light years. That's not too bad. I mean, we could up that by selling all the cargo racks. Because I'm not sure if this happened pre 2.1, but cargo racks themselves have a slight weight to them. So they will actually reduce your jump range ever so slightly. But I'm not overtly fussed because we're just going to go and have a look, see how well this thing does in a spotter combat. 
Obviously, it's not going to be long combat because we've only got torpedoes and a couple of uh, pulse lasers. So we'll go and see how well it goes. See you guys out there. Okay, guys, we found our first victim. Why am I laughing? Just take a look at his name. <laughs> I'm really curious about this, but uh, apparently these missiles that these... Ooh, who the hell is shooting at me? Oh, Federal Security Services. Naturally. So I'm now wanted again, so I'm going to have to go and vamuski. Somewhat. Let's go and pop a shield cell. So let's target this, guys. Where is it? I want to find a shield shield generator. There it is. I don't. You know what? Because apparently these ones actually go. These missiles go and target the shield generator. So let's go and find out what it does exactly. So it's a ninety-seven percent. You can see the missile flying off there, coming over on an intercept course. Where has that torpedo gone? So let's swap over to the next one. Let's get our shields back up again. Did we hit him? The missiles are still after him. He needs to be over. Let's try this one more time. Yeah, no, we're not going to get him. Let's get the hell out of dodge for now. We'll come back and try this again after a reload. Oh, isn't this just typical? <laughs> All right, we've only got one one torpedo left, so let's give this a go. Why the hell not? Well, it's nice to see that we're able to get turned around quickly enough. So, should we give this a go? He's uh, he's going to start firing on us very soon. But we need to get outside of 700 metres away from him. So let's go and target his shield generator. There it is. Come on, lock on. I don't want to do any damage to him yet. I want that to hit him. So let's what? Oh, holy crud! Did you see that? One torpedo did 70% damage to his shield generator. Oh, we have nice blue weapons as well. Yeah, you drop your chaff. Oh, he's firing cannons at us as well. Now you can see my weapons are firing at a slightly different rate. Because they didn't... They didn't get modified to the same level. Oh, come on, can we get this guy? Where the hell... Where the hell did this shield generator go? There we go, shield generator. Yes, I know we're taking damage, but so is he. Flight assist off. Flight assist off. Under attack. 
Oh, this is not good, is it? We can now turn this guy quite easily now, which is quite hilarious. But I'm going to get the hell out of Dodge. We need to get the hell out of here. And I think we're already dead, but oh well. Ah! Go on, boost, 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 boost. Let's get the hell out of here. If I must go faster, must go faster, must go faster, must go faster. Oh, actually, I forget. With the the dirty drive tuning, we're actually able to get away really quickly. Oh, thank you, thank you, dirty drive tuning. We made it. I don't care about the temperature. We're alive. Okay, now to go and get docked <laughs> and to go and rearm, repair, and refuel. Okay, so we're back in a res site. This time I've gone for a hazardous just because I want to try and find as little police presence as possible. Ooh, we have a vulture over here. This is not going to be a police presence, I don't believe. I don't think he's here as a miner. No, he's not. He's a purple pirate. So, let's go and, as before, target his shield generator. Where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. Here we go. So let's catch up with him. And I have noticed that the speed of the ship has gone up quite dramatically to almost 400 meters per second in the boost. Can we get it over 400 meters per second? No, we can't. We just can't manage it. So, pop. Ooh, that was brutal. So, let's pop chaff. Yeah, you're not going to like that, are you? But I'm targeting the power distributor again for some reason. I want to target you. So, let's get the shields back up. Where's my torpedo gone? Well, he's being targeted by somebody else as well, so that's going to help us immensely. Let's drop some chaff. There we go. Now, what I want to do is target his power plant and wait until his shields go down. Oh, there we go. Your shields are down. Come on, come on, come on. Lock. Oh, there we go. Come on, power plant. Power plant. We want that to hit his power plant. Come on. Come on. I want to see how well this goes. Don't run away from it. Oh, it's, com it's coming in. It's closing in. Come on. Oh, that hits, I think. Oh, he's taken some decent damage. But was that our torpedo? So you can see that the maneuverability of this ship has gotten a lot better. We've got a lot higher speed. The maneuverability has got better, but we are paying for it with... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? With heat dispersion. He's dropping cargo. Now, I'm completely out of torpedoes, so we're kind of just relying heavily now on uh, our lasers right now. And they are set for...
And they are set for efficiency rather than anything else. But I do suspect we would have been able to take out this guy without the help of that asp. But I'm happy to I'm happy for it. But the guy this guy's wanted as well. But I'm now out of torpedoes, so um So the Cobra Mark IV. What I've always considered to be the largest turd in uh, the Elite Dangerous ship lineup. What do I think of it once it has been fully upgraded? Uh, well, not just upgraded, but tinkered with by the engineers. I do think it actually makes it a damn sight better. Now, I don't know whether you would think this ship is good enough now that it has been fully upgraded, but especially with the dirty drive tuning, it gets a lot faster, a lot more manoeuvrable. Uh, I haven't had much of an issue with the the heat dispersion. I didn't overheat at all. I brought some heat sink launchers with me just on the off chance that I might need them. Well, obviously I did need them when I was firing off uh, shield cell banks, but other than that, I really didn't need them. And I think that was uh, thanks in large part to me setting the two pulse lasers at the front to um, efficient. Maybe if I had changed those to burst lasers and tried something different, that might have been nice. I don't know. But it went quite nicely and if we weren't in a really unfair fight with those um, system security, then maybe it would have gone a little bit more differently. But, alas, we were in a rather poor fight there but we did manage to get away with the absolute amazing turn of speed this thing managed to pick kick up and that surprised the hell out of me i really was not expecting this ship to shift it quite as fast as it did so i've got to say i was quite pleasantly surprised but anyway let me know what you think about how i set up this ship i mean i know the torpedoes weren't exactly the most efficient but i do think that they were absolutely hilarious when it came to taking out the shield generator of that vulture. I thought that was classic. But anyway, that's enough for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If so, please do hit those like and subscribe buttons because that really does help my channel out. And anyway, guys, I've been... I, and as always, guys, I've been Commander Chaos Wolf. You guys have been epic. I will see you soon. And until then, Commanders, keep flying and stay shiny.